There are four main types of session hijacking attacks that we'll cover during this video. First of all, the session theft, and the best way to do that is actually installing a nefarious proxy server. Cookie theft, session calculation, which is kind of done outside of the session itself, and brute force attacks against session hijacking. I'm going to go through all of these right now. The primary type of session hijacking attack, probably the most graceful and elegant of them, is the concept of session theft, actually becoming the man in the middle with the classic security paradigm of a man in the middle attack, where the attacker gets in the middle of a session and actually captures the information going back and forth, including uh, the TCP establishment, the sequence numbers, the network identification, so the MAC addresses, the port numbers, all that kind of stuff, and then intercepts at some point becomes either the client or the server, gets in the way and becomes a true man in the middle and proxies the traffic back and forth. If this is done correctly, the attacker convinces the server that, that the attacker is actually the client. The client sometimes can't quite tell that the server is the server or not. Oftentimes this breaks the connection between the client and the server, but that doesn't really matter. If the attacker has stepped in the middle and becomes the client to the server, then the attack is probably going to be successful. Thinking about that, most of the time the attacks are based on, can I impersonate this client to the server? Can I convince the server that I'm someone else so that I can commit a fraudulent transaction or that I can delete a database or that I can alter something I shouldn't be able to alter. That's the type of ethical hack that we're looking for here. And breaking the client connection, having the client 404 out or time out with their browser or, or have to hit restart or refresh something like that, that often doesn't tip off the client enough and in fact may not be a factor, may not be a component of a failure, may actually just be success. One of the easiest and most straightforward ways to actually implement this kind of man-in-the-middle attack for session hijacking is to install a nefarious proxy server. A proxy server that you own. That's where the word nefarious comes from. It's actually kind of a semi-evil, evil light type of proxy server that you install somewhere. You convince the client that you are the, either a correct proxy server or you are actually the target, and then you proxy all of that communication. That's going to be the right way to do it in a lot of cases. Why? Because you're using established methodology for IT to actually get in between. If you think about it, most companies have no direct connection between each individual client or user computer and the internet. They have some type of intermediate, some type of proxy system, no matter what it is. So the client is already used to having to go through something in the middle to get out to the internet. If the client doesn't know the difference between your target proxy server, your nefarious proxy server, and an authentic proxy server, that's fantastic. You've got that done. You've actually installed it and configured it. If they can somehow tell the difference, well, then you move on to another client. But it's extremely effective. The only concern is that if you leave a nefarious proxy server up for any length of time, clients are going to eventually figure it out. They're either going to get reconfigured through group policy or some type of management to use the correct proxy server, or an administrator is going to stumble upon the fact that maybe a quarter of the of the clients in their network are pointed to some other proxy server that seems to be proxying an awful lot of traffic that this person doesn't know about. Could take days, could take years, but it may come up during detection. I like to visualize how a nefarious proxy server works in an environment this way. The client really does believe that they are connecting straight to the internet there might be some firewallage in the play in in the middle there might be some type of of intermediate thing protecting them but they're connecting straight out to the internet but you and i know that what's really happening is we've got this ethical hacker man in the middle attack going the man in the middle becomes the internet to the client and becomes the client to the internet and proxies the traffic back and forth that's the best way to think about it is all that traffic is going through the attacker through the ethical hacker, the man in the middle. 
It does require a little bit of engineering and it can actually have performance impact. But guess what? People are used to the internet slowing down. People are used to being a little bit more patient with that kind of transaction. So it may not go noticed at all, in fact. The ways to implement a nefarious proxy server, these steps are step number one, you actually install a thin proxy client or a thin proxy server rather somewhere in the network, preferably inside the target network. It's much easier to convince clients to use a proxy that's inside the network than outside somehow. So that might actually be a bit of kludge, but thin proxies are super easily available. Plenty of command line proxies, proxies that install as services, proxies that are invisible to the compromised system. So once you've compromised the system, one of the things you can do is simply run this in the background and have it proxy everything, logging everything, and then sending that out to you or having you pick up the logs. Step two, is pointing the target at the proxy server. So the client itself needs to be compromised and there's a variety of ways. You've already learned a little bit about malware and about changing settings on systems, logging in and, and making that change manually or installing some kind of browser-based malware or system-wide malware that actually changes the proxy server to your nefarious proxy server. Again, this is a little bit more elegant and subtle of an attack. It's not as obvious as a bunch of ads for adult sites popping up on their on their client or a bunch of, you know, malware kind of doing nasty things, changing the screensaver and opening and closing the CD-ROM like some kind of IT-based poltergeist. What I'm talking about here is they simply have a different connection to the internet. The client's probably not going to notice it at all. And as I said, the biggest notice might be that performance is a little bit degraded. That's okay. Most people are tolerant of that. And the target is compromised at that point. You decide whether you want to simply sniff connections going both ways, whether you want to steal credentials, whether you want to actually at some point become the client to the server or the server to the client and get in the middle. Any of that is available once you've got a nefarious proxy server between the client and the server.